Hi, I'm Pete Scargill. This is a quick review of the new Sony uh, Vio Tap 11. This is a Windows 8 a tablet uh, that hopefully can be used as a replacement for a laptop and a tablet. We'll see very shortly. So uh, this is the packaging for the uh, Vio 11. Quite a big chunky uh, job. Not exactly what you would expect for a very small tablet. Um, so um, on the front it says Sony Make Believe Vio Tap 11. Uh, this is the 128 gigabyte version. Nice uh, plain uh, box. I'm going to open it up and we'll take a look. So inside, what do we see? Box full of cables and bits and pieces and the Sony Vio 11. Now if you take a look at that, that's a pretty impressive, slim tablet, just like any other tablet you might see. Medium resolution, not stunningly high, but pretty good nonetheless. Um, so what's special about this? It's got a camera on the front and back, just another tablet. No, it's not. This is potentially a Windows 8.1 full computer in there. So how do you type on it? Well, this comes complete with this little item. This weighs nothing. On the surface of it, a screen cover for the tablet. Magnetic clipped straight on the tablet, but actually it's a full-size keyboard with a pad and everything. Okay, so how does that work? Well, we take our tablet. We, there you go, that's the complete job there. So there is your keyboard and tablet. Look at the thickness of that. I mean, it's pretty amazing that, really. Um, of course, it's one thing to have something that looks nice. Does it work? Let's see what you, what else you get. So you get uh, the usual stuff. Um, you get um, in here. You get a a pen, which we'll go into shortly, uh, with a battery. You get a manual. Nobody reads manuals, do they? Power supply, uh, and, uh, adapters, that kind of thing. So the stuff you need to power it. The stuff you probably won't read the pen, the tablet, and the cover. Let's clear this all out of the way and have a look uh, at the device itself. Okay, so first things first, the, um, the pen uh, has a nib, and there's a spare nib comes with it. This is a really nice, it's not a big, thick, chunky thing. It's a nice feel to a pen. I would have preferred had it had some kind of some kind of rubber there but it, it hasn't uh, it has a couple of buttons on it which presumes a click and, and back button and the top screws off to reveal the hole for the battery I'm going to take a chance here on putting this in the right way I think that's pretty yep that's right and now you have um, a pen so there's the pen I've taken the wrapping off a couple of nice features. Uh, there are four little um, pieces of, of rubber on the corner here, so that if you happen to put the tablet in upside down, you're not going to scratch the keyboard, which is quite nice. Uh, other nice features uh, camera. Uh, this, now, one of the problems I have with most tablets is I can't stand them up. So you're sitting on a train, you can't stand them up. So people come up with all sorts of convoluted ideas. Sony came up with the simplest idea, uh, a pretty substantial, there you go, stand it up, take the keyboard off, and what you have there is a computer. On the other hand, if you want it to be a tablet, there's the tablet. Isn't that good? So there is a connector here, tiny little connector there which presumably transfers power back and forward. You can turn the keyboard on and off. As to feel, yeah, it feels quite solid. It feels kind of like the um, the Apple keyboard. These, it's not flat keys. They've got a slight, uh, they actually move, which is nice. Um, no silly placing of uh, arrow keys. So um, when you're typing, you're not going to hit the arrow key accidentally. I'll just show you that there. Pretty standard layout. There's your control, your arrow keys down at the bottom, big shift key, big space bar, and function keys on the top. And it's pretty much standard 
standard size comparing it to my normal keyboard it's it's pretty standard so the next thing we're going to do is figure out how to turn it on we're going to turn the uh, we're going to turn the keyboard on and somewhere there will be an on off switch to turn the tablet on and there you go okay so i've turned things around a bit to uh to let you see unfortunately the bio um has powered up with a fairly low level of brilliance um, but as you can imagine it's Windows so up here we have regional language United Kingdom etc wants me to hit next so I'll just simply um, go through these items um, without any setup or, or, or whatsoever the keyboard which I just remind you is not attached uh, and mouse are talking I mean there are they're, they're connected to the bio so next for that I've got the usual, I accept uh, the license, a few basics, personalized, etc. Colors, I'm just going to use this standard setup for this. Uh, wants to know about my Wi-Fi, obviously, connect uh, automatically, uh, at which point I'll put in my password. And to connect. And the brilliance has turned itself up, and now you can see the, the, the screen here, settings, express settings. So sign into your PC, usual email address, checking for a Microsoft account. I'm still here, still waiting for it to sign into my Microsoft account. Okay, I gave up waiting for the Microsoft account. I'm going to sign in without it now. What's the disadvantage of doing that? Um, like Google, like Apple, you need a Microsoft account to download apps. However, one of the reasons for looking at these tablets is you don't have to use the apps, which personally I think are a short-term thing. Um, the original Microsoft Surface didn't go down too well. I don't want to use apps. I just want to use ordinary Microsoft programs. So, in fact, I'm just going to create a local account. Re-enter the password. And there you go. So finalizing your settings. I've put in my username. I just a, just a PC, you know, as you would with any PC. Uh, and so here we are at the start menu. You can move it around, of course, with your finger, and you can also use this pen. The pen's particularly good. I can see some action happening here long before I actually touch the screen. Um, looks quite nippy up to now. You've got a very soft touch on the screen. Not like the old resistive displays where you had to press on the screen. Um, so this is your Windows um, 8 interface. Uh, I'm one of those people uh, who doesn't like it. So I'm going to try and find the desktop. There it is. The initial settings are complete. Restart your VIO to apply the settings. We're doing some updating of system firmware here. That was pretty quick and uh, screens one blank and we've got um, the login um, I have to say that was pretty quick really you want me to put in my password welcome Pete and we're back up running I mean that wasn't bad that was, that was quite good so if we go to desktop this time we've got a Sony VAIO desktop let's see if I can show you this now what you're seeing here on the camera really doesn't do justice to this this is a really crystal black so black really crystal clear display the text is absolutely beautiful um, Windows 8 build 9200 before going any further really is to see if this needs updating to Windows 8.1 and I'm guessing that will be one of the um, one of the uh, first things you see here somewhere on updates so I'm going to go away and have a look at that and come back to you uh, because I'd, I'd obviously rather show you with uh, Windows. So, it's the next day <laughs> when I started to install stuff on the Samsung. As you can imagine, the Windows 8 was the first version, uh, not recently updated, and so we started that whole scenario of all the updates. I think something like half a gigabyte of updates. Um, Initially, the Wi-Fi didn't seem to work properly. 
a couple of other things didn't seem to work properly. All of that went away with the updates we've. So by the time I was finished, uh, before Office, I had about 58 gigabytes left. Um, I've installed Office. That's taken me down to about 55. And now I'm going through the, the procedure of installing my mail account, uh, which again, this is something, a difference between, um, let's say, a, a, a toy uh, tablet that only keeps the last few days mail and a proper corporate account. I have about 1.3, 1.4 gigabytes of email and calendar and notes and all the rest of it. So that's loading in now. That's going to take some time. And when it's finished, I'll show you it in operation and uh, let you know how much of the original 128 gigabytes is left. And so here we are several hours later. So we now have Windows 8.1 uh, installed, apart from the time element and a whole load of updates. That was pretty straightforward. It eventually appeared in the App Store. Um, I don't particularly like the Windows 8 interface, um, and I can imagine a lot of people in offices will have a difficulty with that. So I have opted to use a free tool um, to give me back uh, my uh, start, uh, something like the start bar. In fact, it's a good deal better than the original start bar. So down at the bottom there, click, you get the, uh, get the start menu there. A rather interesting way of doing something. Um, there is a there is a, a button called All Apps, uh, where you see all of your apps, and you put a little star next to them, and you, you click on the star, and they become favourites. So you normally come into your favourites, which are the apps you've selected. Uh, you'll see here uh, that in fact I have um, selected um, the Microsoft Office. Uh, tools. So I've installed Office 2013. So here you have um, Access, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, Publisher, and Word. So starting at 128 gigabytes, um, by the time Windows 8.1 was on there, I was down to 58 gigabytes. I then installed the full Outlook, and uh, in fact, I have quite a lot of mail, well over a gigabyte of mail. Yet, as you can see, uh, I now have 55 gigabytes left, just over half of the available um, space. So that's not bad. Uh, you could say, well, you know, if you get the drive too full, won't it slow down? Remember, this is a solid state drive, so the kind of fragmentation issues aren't going to be as bad as it would be. Uh, with a small amount of space left, so as it would be with an ordinary drive. So pretty much, um, I, you know, th this looks doable. The 128 gigabyte model uh, would appear to do the job. Uh, what you're looking at here is obviously the uh, pen, uh, which is wireless, and a Bluetooth mouse, which I picked up from eBay for about five pounds. Speedlink, uh, it's quite good actually. Uh, that works uh, a treat as would obviously an external keyboard, but I'm actually finding this keyboard to be quite um, usable. So in terms of apps that are already up and running, you know, are they, do they come up quickly, uh, slowly? Well, there is uh, Outlook, uh, as you can see quite instantly, and there is OneNote. I'm going to click that now, and as you can see, again, quite quickly. Uh, now I'll go uh, for an app that isn't currently loaded. Um, let's take Word. So three, two, one, click. And as you can see, it's really not bad at all. Um, this is just a 1.2 gig processor, but in fact, it seems up to now to work pretty well. Screen text is a bit small. You might want to adjust that from the default settings if your eyesight's not up to it. Uh, but overall, uh, it looks like we have a reasonable replacement for a laptop while, of course, being a perfectly usable um, tablet. One of the things about uh, OneNote, of course, is that you can take your tablet with you and, uh, trying to avoid the light there, you can scribble on it. And it's quite responsive. If you've not used OneNote before, it's a fantastic uh, Fantastic package. 
and there you go and of course the one note notes will copy down to your phone or whatever and so there it is basically windows 8.1 on a tablet come laptop and one thing you mustn't do is do what i've already done a couple of times thinking it's a laptop because it looks like it have an awful tendency to close the lid not really a good idea when it's not attached to the keyboard